Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality, and today I am doing my next installment in the Dollar Tree Junk Journal Ch Challenge 2019 that I am hosting here on my channel. If you'd like more information about that, it is still going on. The deadline is the last day of September, and we're having so much fun here. So, so far, what I have made for my Junk Journal Challenge is the cover which we did a video together on if you'd like to see that video go ahead and check it out and then I also went through and put my signatures together picked out my papers and added in my all my embellishments and now it is ready to go over to the sewing machine so that is what we're going to do today I'm going to go through just one of the signatures and just show you how I sew everything in I'll do the other two off camera and then after I'm done sewing everything I'll come back and show you how we put this into the spine so if you would like to join in on this challenge go to the very first video it is called Dollar Tree Junk Journal Challenge 2019 with Creative Crafticality I will put that link the very first link for that down below I'll put the other ones underneath it but what you need to do is go over there, listen to all the requirements. They're also listed in the description of that video. And you are to make a junk journal made completely with Dollar Tree products. Make it $15 and under for your supplies. Now, your supplies don't include the tools. So your scissors, your trimmer, glue, thread, your sewing machine, that kind of stuff. You don't have to include that and that's just because normally people have that stuff in their stash already. So that's that's it basically and what you're supposed to do is if you make one before the end of September, do a video response for it. If you have a YouTube channel, go ahead in that first video, let me know that you are doing it and I will go on over to your channel and watch your video. You also can... If you don't have a YouTube channel, you can post your book on Instagram. You can do like a little flip through on there or just post as many pictures as it allow you to do that so I can see what you, what you did. This is all for inspiration. You don't send anything in. It's just you making the journal for yourself and then tagging me in a video, linking my challenge video to in your YouTube channel your YouTube description box or tagging me over on Instagram and putting a hashtag Dollar Tree JJ challenge 2019 on your post so I then will ha have a giveaway for the challenge and the giveaway is the journal that I'm making so it is a cat themed because I love cats and if you saw my first Dollar Tree Junk Journal challenge that I did with I'm a Cool Mom on YouTube. Back in 2017, I made a dog themed junk journal. So this time I wanted to change it up. I found this really cute image that was in a calendar from the Dollar Tree. So I made the cover like this using a bunch of pieces from, actually it wasn't a, I did use a calendar for my signatures, but this image was actually from a folder, a school folder that was from the Dollar Tree. And this was from that, as well as these other pieces here. And then I added a cat collar along the bottom as decoration. I used some of the lace from the Dollar Tree. The book was from the Dollar Tree, the cover. And then inside, I used parts of the calendar. I used some, I'll just flip through here. I used some paper that I dyed with the Hawaiian Punch sugar-free mixes that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And that's some of that manuscript paper they sell there. This was one this was from the book that I used the cover of that book. Doilies from the Dollar Tree, lined paper, and then yeah, so I made three signatures to put in here. They're smaller signatures because this is a smaller spine book, but 
I think this will turn out super cute, so stick around and I will show you how I sew my signatures together. So to start off, I'm going to pull my first page off. This was two images from the cat calendar, and since one side has the calendar part, I didn't want that side to show, so I put two calendar pieces together and now I'm going to sew along the top and the bottom and that will leave pockets on the sides. When I'm done, I'm going to take my one inch circle punch and just punch a notch out here so that you know when you come to that page that it is a pocket page. When I'm sewing, I usually put my stitch at the number four stitch, which is the, a bigger zigzag. I'm on a Brother machine that is the Project Runway Limited Edition. They still have one that they sell on Amazon, so I will link it down below. I can say, I say all good things about this machine. It, it's very inexpensive, but it has like a hundred different stitches on it, and it's never let me down. I love it. It has a great bobbin winder, and it is the drop-in drop -in bobbin. It also has a needle threader, which I've never actually used. Um, I'm sure someday I'll figure out how to use that, but it does have that feature as well. So I usually put it on the number four zigzag stitch, and I put the stitch length up to like three and a half. Up to four, and then the stitch, stitch length at three and a half. Because you're you don't need it to be a tiny, tiny stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing my sewing and we'll have fun with this together. So I just went and did a zigzag stitch on the top edge and then went ahead and sewed a stitch along the other side. And later on I'll go in and punch half circles on each side so that you can tell that it is a pocket. I went on to my next page and on this one I had a belly band so I just stitched the top and bottom of that belly band. This was a piece from the calendar. On that page I also wanted to do a ruffle with some ribbon so I just had a piece of ribbon that was about one and a half times the length of the page and then I just took it and scrunched up little sections of the ribbon and did the zigzag stitch along the left side of the ribbon. I was just trying to get my camera adjusted there. Now hopefully you can see a little bit better. But I kind of squish the ribbon up between my fingers and then do a stitch and then just keep moving along until I have it all stitched down the whole length of the page. Now you could also do this with, um, you could stitch the ribbon by itself and then glue it on the page, but I just think it's easier like this. If Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get it going straight, so whatever is easier for you. And then Go ahead and trim the ribbon off the bottom and the top. And I just love the look of that. Now on this page, I'm just making a little pocket with this picture that I cut from, I believe that was from the calendar. I'm stitching it on top of a piece of, of the notebook, or not, yeah, it was the, uh, school folder. I made a little pocket with that little kitten picture and then just sewed a tuck spot with the uh, with the blue part. On the next page I'm gonna sew a little tab there that is just a piece of the pot holder that I used to cut up for fabric and then I'm going to sew another cat picture on to make a pocket on the page. If you wanted to 
change up your stitch you could do that as well I just like the zigzag stitch now on the next page I have this piece from the folder and it happened to have a little fold already on it so I left that folded piece and I sewed that little tiny picture of the cat on there now I'm just gonna sew the fold onto the page so that it makes a little secret flap uh, well it's not really a secret but it's a flap on the side of the page and then you can put like journaling on there or a picture or whatever now I'm just stitching a doily on the end on the side there to make a tuck spot and then this was just a piece of the wrapping paper that I chose to use with my book from the Dollar Tree and I cut a strip of it and then I creased it every inch or so so now I'm sewing this onto the edge of my paper and it'll make a paper ruffle and then trim the ends off there here's another tab that I made with the lace so I'm just gonna stitch that on So I have my sewing complete on my first signature. I went ahead and cut two notches out on the back and the front cover just so you could tell that it was a pocket there. Now I'm going to get it ready to sew into the cover. So what you want to do is open it up to the center. Find your center piece. line up your papers the way that you want them so if you want them all centered within the cover or you could stagger them kind of like that get them all flush up against that middle edge and take some paper clips and you want a paper clip right down in the center fold right down near that center fold so I like to put one on each side of the fold make sure it's tight down in there do that on this side if you want to keep it folded you can For, since this doesn't reach all the way down there I would just take and put paper clips like one on the center of each side just like that so that's down and then put one on that side as well like that so that is ready Oop. It came out. There. So my signature is ready to go there. You want to pull your cover over. Now taking your cover and a piece of the paper from your book that your cover came from you want to cut off a strip of this paper the width of your spine so this is about one inch so I'm gonna go ahead and fold it there where cut this off we're just making a guide here for the signatures it's 
So we're going to fold this in half lengthwise. So that's where your middle signature, your second signature will be. And you're going to take and fold each side in half. Just fold the edge into the center fold. And do that on both sides. And that's going to make your first and third line of where you're going to sew your first and third signatures in. So now take your strip and we're going to fold so that we make three folds down the strip because I want to put three holes in each of my signatures to be able to sew it in and do the pamphlet stitch on here. So what we're going to do is fold this in half and then in half again and that will give us our folds. And where the folds intersect the folds that we did lengthwise, that is where the hole is going to be. So this hole will be right here at this intersection. And then in the middle, it'll be right here at that intersection. And then the last hole will be there. Now in the middle, it's right, you go to that middle crease in the first intersection, right in the middle, and then down below. And then the same on the other, the third fold there. So that leaves us with nine holes. One, three here, three here, and three here, and that is what we're going to use to do our holes inside our cover. So what you want to do, I'm going to use, you can use like a mat, a squishy mat, or I'm just going to use the book, the pages from the book anyway, and you could put some washi tape to put this down. I'm not going to, I'm just going to hold it, it's going to be fine. Line this up as best you can here and just make, using your guide, poke your holes down in through the cover. Move on down, make sure you're straight, and then poke the holes. Go down to the last one. So we can see our holes went through. Kind of hard to see on that side, but they did go through and then they went through on this side. So now you want to use your, make sure you have it the way, I could tell that this was the way I had the original. It's pretty much the same on both sides, but depending on, if you decide to space these out a bit, a little bit differently, you can always write top and bottom on there just so you get the lines, the holes lined up on your signatures as well. So now you're going to use this 
and we, when you poke the holes in your signatures, you're only going to use that center piece. So pull your signature over, line this up center on your page, as far as up and down here. And we're going to go ahead and poke the holes through. Now I'll show you how to sew this into the cover. So you'll need your needle. And I'm going to use this lighter blue twine here. I think the most difficult part about this is actually threading this twine into the head because it there's lots of different pieces twisted together on here so I just kind of get it wet you could put a little bit of glue on the end and let it dry so it's kind of hard but just make sure you have a big hole you don't want the needle to be ginormous like this is probably as big as you would want to go so you don't make huge holes in your papers. And then just go ahead and thread your needle and see if I can get this. It's hard for me because I'm kind of in that transition with my eyeballs to where I wear contacts for seeing far distances, but my close vision is starting, it's right, it's at that in-between stage, just, you know, do I need to wear readers? Do I not want to wear readers? <laughs> I hate glasses, so that's why I wear contacts in the first place. I don't like wearing glasses. So now it's like I'm starting to not be able to see, see very well doing close things and especially trying to thread a needle is kind of difficult. There, I got it. Alright, little miss. You gonna help me? Come on over here. There you go. Go on on. Go that way. There you go. Alright, so how much do you need of this for your signature? My rule of thumb is three times the size of the height of your book. So we'll just measure one, two, three, and that gives you enough play to where you can make a nice bow at the end and have leftover dangling down. And it just makes it easier when you're trying to sew it in because sewing, doing the pamphlet stitch if you've never done it before, it's not really that difficult, but just maneuvering in and out of the book is kind of, you know, sometimes can be a little frustrating, but once you know how to do it, it's not that bad. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with your needle. You're going to go through the center hole. And this is the first signature, so you're going to put it through the center hole of your first row of holes there. And you're going to go pull your needle through. And then I always like to just leave the string at the end here, leave it to where the end comes to the very end of the book there. Now, you're going to either go to the top row but the top hole or the bottom hole doesn't matter. 
I'll just go ahead and go to the bottom. You're gonna go through, and I like to pull it through the cover first. Just pull your needle up through there until your thread is nice and like it's up close there. We're not gonna pull it tight because you don't wanna pull it all the way through the holes. So now you're going to go into that corresponding hole through the signature. And evidently I have a supervisor. <laughs> She's supervising because this is the book about her. And pull that through. You have it in the center now. You're going to take this thread and go all the way to that third hole that we haven't gone through yet and pull it through your signature and go through that hole there to the back of the cover. She really likes this. <laughs> Now you're going to take your thread and you're going to go to the center again and you're going to go up in that hole. Now this is the part that can get, get a little tricky because sometimes you might push your needle through the individual threads of your twine and then you kind of have to get it out of there. doesn't look like I did that this time. But pull your pull your loose thread through like that. Now you're going to go into your center hole again through the signature hole. And pull it through. Now you can pull your needle off at this point because you're, you're through everything. Go ahead. You want to make sure your center thread here that you have one thread on this side on one side and one thread on the other side because we're going to tie this together and we want it tied to the center thread. You want to make sure everything is tight back here and it is. If for some reason you can't get it tight, it's probably because you've pushed with your needle when you went back through the center, you got it in between the threads of your other thread. <laughs> and so then you kind of have to see if you can pull it up a little bit, make it loose so you can pull it up and pull it out so it's not in between. But I did pretty good that time and it's nice and tight. You wanna make sure your signature doesn't move and it's good in there. So now I'm going to do a double knot and then I'm going to make a bow with this and trim off, make the bow the however big I want to make the bow and then I'm going to trim this off to match like that. Now you can take your paper clips out Okay, so that is the first signature sewn in there. Easy peasy. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead off camera and sew the rest of my signatures with my sewing machine and get the other two signatures sewn into my cover and Next video will be a flip through and adding all the details to the inside of the book. We'll make some tags and some like little envelopes 
just journaling cards, things like that to put into the book. So I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment and subscribe. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram. You can post your junk journal challenge journal over on Instagram as well as doing a VR. If you have already done your haul, you can do a haul video if you'd like or post on Instagram the things that you bought at the Dollar Tree Junk Journal at, for the Dollar Tree Junk Journal Challenge and that will give you an extra giveaway ticket into my drawing. So check out that first video if you want to know all the requirements and the, then the series of how I made my journal and hopefully we will all get inspiration inspiration for each other. All the people that will join in on my challenge, I will do a video at the end, um, probably the video where I tell who won the giveaway. I will feature those channels or those Instagrams, those Instagram accounts um, of all the people that decided to join in on my challenge. So. I want to give everybody inspiration and feature people that decide to join in. Have a great week. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.